Sodium chloride, which we usually address as table salt, is the third food component that we need to deal with when we talk about food and its relation to the metabolic syndrome. I may tell you straight away, I am very important. The salt in the soup is like the icing on the cake. Without me, your food would taste absolutely boring. Oh, hello, Asa. You're absolutely right. Salt is very important for the taste of our foods. Such as sweetness, saltiness belongs to the five basic tastes. We perceive saltiness in the oral cavity. And did you know that in addition to the salty impression, the addition of table salt to foods may also have other sensory effects? In low concentrations, salt addition enhances the taste of sour and sweet impressions. This is why we usually add a pinch of salt to a cake batter. Saltiness may also mask bitter impressions. As the salty impression is preferred to the bitter impression by many consumers, this behavior is often made use of in food industry. Furthermore, adding salt to food is a very traditional way to preserve the product. A high salt concentration in food deteriorates the living conditions for microorganisms. This has been made use of for centuries to significantly extend the shelf life of foods. This sounds excellent. So, where is the problem? The problem is that the consumption of high amounts of table salt is clearly related to high blood pressure. And as we have already learned in this course, high blood pressure belongs to one of the risk factors for cardiovascular diseases and the metabolic syndrome. Sodium chloride is essential for the human body. We need sodium chloride for the regulation of the body fluid balance, for the transmission of stimuli from muscle and nerve cells. It is an important constituent of the gastric juice, and last but not least, it plays an important role for the regulation of the blood pressure. However, in our diet, the amount of consumed salt is far too high. The WHO recommends a daily sodium chloride intake of 5 grams per day. This is the amount that you can see on the spoon on the right-hand side. However, in most countries, the consumption average is between 9 and 12 grams per day. 10 grams is the amount that you can see on the left spoon. The occurrence of sodium and chloride is closely related to the occurrence and consumption of potassium. Potassium acts as a kind of antagonist to sodium. It is not only important to lower the intake of sodium in our diet, but to increase the potassium intake. If the sodium consumption is too high and potassium intake too low, the human body reacts with increased blood pressure and vice versa. Lowering the sodium intake while increasing the potassium intake may reduce the systolic and diastolic blood pressure in adults. Then it is easy. We take potassium chloride instead of sodium chloride and the problem is solved. Good point, Asa. There were already scientists and product developers who tried to substitute sodium chloride by potassium chloride in several products. The problem is that potassium chloride tastes bitter. As a consequence, we can only substitute of up to approximately 20% of sodium chloride by potassium chloride. Also, a substitution of sodium chloride with calcium chloride or magnesium chloride is not possible, as they also taste bitter. And the substitution by lithium chloride is not an alternative at all, as it is toxic to humans. But instead of talking about salt substitutes, let's have a look where we get our average daily 10 grams of sodium chloride from. You might think that we consume the largest proportion from the table salt that we add when we have the impression that it lacks in a dish. But this is not correct. 70 to 80% of the salt that we consume comes from processed foods. Main sources are bread and bakery goods, meat products and sausages as well as cheeses. Furthermore, many convenience products contain high amounts of salt. And we should not forget about breakfast cereals, crisps and chips and other salted snacks that we like to consume. But why is it so difficult to reduce the amounts of salt in different products? A reduction of the salt concentration does not only change the sensory impression, but has significant impact on different properties and the shelf life of the products. Let's have a look at the components of this sandwich. In sausages, for example, salt serves as a multifunctional ingredient. The salt reduction will lead to changes in the aroma and taste, the texture and the shelf life of the products. 
For many types of sausages, especially for dry cured sausages such as Italian salami, salt is required to lower the water activity in the product. Low water activity is necessary to control the growth of the microorganisms that would cause microbial spoilage. As a consequence, a low water activity is important for the preservation of the products. It also regulates the growth and metabolism of microorganisms that are important for the flavor formation. With respect to texture, salt is important for the swelling of the proteins and for the water binding capacity in the sausages. Significant salt reduction would require the addition of other ingredients that can bind water. However, it has been shown in several studies that this might change the hardness, the juiciness and the chewiness of the products. Cheeses also belong to the group of foods with high salt concentrations. From what we have learned so far, you will not be surprised to hear that salt reduction in cheeses does not only alter the sensory properties and the texture, but has significant influence on cheese manufacture, the characteristics of different cheese types and the shelf life of the cheeses. Cheese is a fermented milk product, which is produced by the addition of enzymes to participate the caseins and by the addition of different types of microorganisms that are responsible for the formation of the cheese flavor or the formation of the holes in the cheese. Some of these cheese cultures, for example, those that are required for blue vein cheese, require high salt concentrations for their growth in the cheese. And for semi-hard and hard cheeses, such as Italian Parmesan, for example, high amounts of crystalline salts are applied to the surface of the loaf of cheese to form the rind of these cheese types. Bread is another very important source for dietary salt intake. As for cheese and sausages, a salt reduction in the products does not only impact the sensory properties, but has also consequences for their production. The addition of salt to a dough influences the development of the gluten structures, which are responsible for the viscosity and the rheology, as well as the water binding capacities of the dough. Salt also regulates the yeast activities during the fermentation step. Lower salt concentration will less inhibit the lease activity, and this will lead to an increased gas release and larger pores and holes in the final product. Finally, also in bread, the water activity is affected by the salt content. A lower salt concentration leads to a higher water activity and, as a consequence, to a shorter shelf life of the product. You might have had the chance to taste bread with a low amount of added salt. If you're not used to these types of bread, we think that it tastes bland and boring. However, we can get used to it. From all these examples, we can see that from a technological point of view, the reduction of salt represents a high challenge for food industry, as salt plays a multifunctional role in our foods. Furthermore, as we have to cope with a large range of different types of products, there is no universal approach to solve this problem. New formulations or new technologies might be required to achieve adequate product characteristics and above all, the required shelf life of the food commodities. In future, changes in the applied technologies on the one hand and multisensory approaches and the search for salt boosters on the other hand will make significant contributions to solve this problem. For us as consumers and from our personal health perspective, there is an urgent need to reduce our daily salt intake. We have learned that it might still take a while until it will be possible to produce appropriate cheeses, sausages and other products with reduced salt concentrations. In the meantime, we need to reduce the extra amounts of salt that we add to our dishes. Furthermore, and this is probably even more effective, we need to reduce the consumption of cheeses, sausages, salted snacks and cereals. This will lead to a change in our dietary habits which will not only help to decrease the daily salt intake, but also, as a side effect, to reduce the amounts of consumed fat. This, in combination with an increased consumption of fruits and vegetables, will not only lower the blood pressure, but will help to reduce the risk from suffering from the metabolic syndrome.